now has been reported all morning. Britain's best-selling newspaper, The Sun, appears to have stopped publishing pictures of topless models on page three after 44 years. The tabloids come under increasing pressure from politicians, campaigners and students who claim it was sexist. But glamour model Laura LeCarle says it should be removed because women can take something positive from it. The amount of people that are campaigning against it are disproportionate to the amount of people that buy the newspaper. So on that basis, it doesn't make any sense to remove it. I'm a real woman. The people on PC are real women. I'm proud of the fact that I openly showcase and express my sexuality and give other people and other women encouragement that if they want to do that, that they can as well. I think it sends out a message to women that women can do as they wish if they choose to, as long as they're not directly harming anybody or or doing anything against the law. If you want to celebrate your sexuality, you can do that. If you don't want to, then you don't have to do that. Well, let's take a look at what's on page three today. Uh, that's the image. While it's not naked women, it's arguably not that far from it. Uh, so is this development less a victory for women's equality and maybe a good PR stunt for the sun? Well, joining us from central London to discuss are the media commentator Steve Hewlett and the comedian and feminist activist Kate Smirthwaite. Great to see you both. Uh, before we get started, though, a reminder, you can join the debate too. Tweet us at Sky News, including the hashtag Sky Debate. Text on 84501. Email news at sky.com. Let us know what you think or if there are any points you want to put to our guests and we'll try to read out some of the comments as we go along. Uh, Steve Hewlett, to you first. Uh, is it gone, do you think? What's the, what's the whisper? Or is it just paused? Uh, no, I think it's gone. Uh, the Times this morning, owned by the same company as The Sun, published a story saying that last Friday was the last time uh, we would see uh, a regular page three topless slot. Now, will topless material ever appear in The Sun again? Well. If somebody famous, let's say Madonna, decides to drop it all, so to speak, then I think you would expect to see that. And theoretically, they have left the door ajar, so that in the event that there were to be a catastrophic decline in readership, which, by the way, I very much doubt will happen, and I don't think they will think will happen either, uh, then theoretically they could bring it back. Remember, The Sun have said absolutely nothing on, uh, on the record other than you know, page three will appear as usual in between pages two and four. So, However, my information from inside the company uh, is that this is it as far as page three is concerned. So, yes, I think page three as we know it uh, in print has gone. It will remain online. And if you want to go to page3.com, you'll still be able to get it. Uh, Kate Smurthwick, we heard there uh, one of the glamour models who appeared on page three defending it, saying it was a celebration of her sexuality. She didn't feel exploited. What was so wrong with it? Well, I'm all for women feeling that they can celebrate their sexuality. I just don't think that the right place to do that is in an area that's labelled news. Um, you know, I'm absolutely not against uh, breasts or nipples. It would be quite difficult for me to live my life. If I was, to be honest, I'd get changed for bed at night and have to have a little sit down and shock and disgust, uh, having been offended at my own image in the mirror. Of course, that's not the issue. The issue is, you know, page one, George Osborne's budget. Page two, what's happening in it? Iraq or Afghanistan, page three, a woman's bare breasts. This isn't news. Uh, women are absolutely encouraged to celebrate their sexuality in places where people go and celebrate their sexuality, but that's not what's newsworthy. And I think this is a fantastic victory. It's been a very long uh, campaign and a very sort of enthusiastically fought one on all fronts. And I think, I hope that it, it might not be the end of the road. There's a lot more we could do about women in the media, but I really hope that it gives other people out there a sense of encouragement that actually your voice can be heard and that actually things can change if you if you speak out about these things and keep pushing and keep making your point um, then then things can change and I think it's absolutely fantastic that here we are uh, finally celebrating a little victory on this front. Uh, Kate, Kate, Steve, Kate points out there is not the end of the road for the campaign because of course there is still page three there's still page three in the star isn't there and you look at the sport and other papers like that there is still a great deal of nudity in lots of the other papers the tabloid papers do you think they will follow suit or do you think that they will, will keep the nipples in there? Well, I, I'm, if I was, it, well, the Daily Star, I imagine, uh, may well continue. I, I don't know. I don't live in Richard Desmond's head, so I don't know, I don't know what he'll imagine. But I mean, th this was different, though, because it was iconic. Remember Murdoch's pitch when he bought The Sun in 1969 and launched page three just a year later. You know, his pitch was to say to the working bloke, you know, we're here for you. So, in addition to being on your side in the matter of politics, never giving in to the establishment and all of that stuff, which, is, which was said very loudly, the idea that, we, that, that he would give his readers what they wanted in terms of what he said they wanted in terms of page three was all about saying, well, we're not going to let the BBC, the Guardian, the feminists, the politicians, the liberals tell you 
our beloved readers what you can have. We're going to give you what you want. But look, so it had more to it than just to see a simple commercial thing. It was part of identifying with that group of readers. Now, the thing is, the campaigners are absolutely right about this, and Murdoch has spotted it. The world has changed. And so now you're looking at this from the point of view of a company desperate to rebuild its reputation in the wake of phone hacking and all of that. Page three was beginning to ring all the wrong bells for a socially responsible company and not enough of the right bells. And although I think I, I understand they had some research inside which suggested they may lose at one stage as many as 200,000 paying readers to the star if they drop page three, the calculation now, I guess, is even if they lose some, that's probably worth it. And they're not sure they're going to lose very many. Remember, 50% of the Sun's readership are female. And, of course, we all live it in a new world. This is not 1970. It's, it's gone in Congress, isn't it, Kate Smothery? Because, uh, as Steve was saying, so many of the Sun's viewers are women. And you look at the other uh, newspaper, which a lot of women read, the Daily Mail, and there's a lot of that. There isn't uh, the same level of nudity, but there is a lot, especially on its website as well, of pictures of women in their bikinis. Women like looking at other pictures of, of women, don't they? Well, I mean, it's interesting that, uh, that Steve picks up and says, oh, you know, the campaign will continue with the star and so on. In actual fact, I think the campaign, you know, has very clearly said that it's about a much, it wants to be about a much broader issue. I mean, it's, it started out, Lucienne Holmes said she started the No More Page 3 campaign when Jessica Ennis won her gold medal, and she expected Jessica Ennis to be the biggest picture of a woman in the newspapers that day, and, of course, in the sun she wasn't. And the, the No More Page 3 campaign already sponsors some women's football teams, and I think they're very interested in doing a lot more than worrying about things like the star I mean of course we will take every victory we can get but having more coverage of women in sports having more coverage of women doing the other important things that women do and being celebrated for something other than what they look like I don't I don't to be honest think that the breakdown of who reads these newspapers is particularly important I mean the buyers and the people who end up seeing it and the way that it just enters our culture more generally uh, these are kind of inevitable things I think what's important though is that we're actually talking about the way women are portrayed in the media and I, I must just pick up on one thing that Steve said in the, this idea that well you know times have moved on and it's all just going to change inevitably you know I, I hear that a lot and I, I have to say that I really don't subscribe to it I think what has happened is some really enthusiastic people have raised their voices and stuck their necks above the parapet you know when women were given the vote uh, best part of a century ago uh, again in, initially the reaction was well you know times have moved on and they did work very hard during the, during the war in the, in the land army didn't they and when we look back with the benefit of hindsight that's ridiculous. The reason women got the vote was because they threw themselves in front of horses. And I think the fact that these women have fought so, so brilliantly and so boldly, they should be celebrated. And to try and take that victory away from them, I, you know, I, I think is a real shame because it is a victory for campaigning. And I hope that other campaigners, equally passionate about other issues, will take hope and vigour from this and uh, you know, redouble their efforts to change other aspects of the media because there is still a lot out there that could be done a lot better. OK, okay. on that point, of, uh, Steve, that... that it was a campaign and it was the campaign that did it uh, whether you agree with that or not do you we, when we look at what's happened over Charlie Hebdo isn't this the same argument essentially that the Charlie Hebdo said they said we want to publish these images why shouldn't the Sun be damned just because this opposition group normal page three says they don't want to see naked women on page three why should a paper be cowed by a pressure group isn't there isn't it's my I have, I have every right to be offended by it but they have every right to print it don't they well, look, uh, th well, there's lots of things, there's lots of things in ri at risk of getting confused here. I'm not trying to take anything away from the impact of the campaigners. All I'm saying is, as a consequence, in part of what the campaigners have done, we don't live in the same sort of world as, as we did in 1970, which means that the commercial calculation that Rupert Murdoch will be making about this and has made about this and has indicated as far as long ago as February 2013 when he indicated on Twitter of all places that he thought that maybe it was out of time as a concept that there, there's a reason for that which is that which is that the world has moved on so the commercial calculation in this world you know does change w would it be fair to say that the sun have been cowed by some campaign i don't think that's right really i think that i say the world has, the world has changed the campaigners have you know have, have given voice to that have amplified all of that and have made a very strong case which is that if you want to see this sort of material you can go online and get it you can still go online to the sun and get it if you want to but the idea uh, i mean an, a very senior editor at the sunday times said to me on the media show on radio 4 last year she you know uh, eleanor mills she's got a couple of daughters the, the idea that you're sitting on the bus and somebody opens the paper and is ogling this uh, around in, in normal so it, it's it really isn't just, it really just isn't right so i think the calculation that's been made uh, is a commercial one which is to say that in the here and now 
Uh, it's not going to do for the sun what it used to do for the sun. It's more trouble than it's worth. One group of people, of course, that have complained about this uh, are the Patriot Girls themselves. Uh, one, Rianne Sugden, uh, went on Twitter this morning to say, it's only a matter of time before everything we do will be dictated to by comfy shoe-wearing, no bra-wearing, man-haters. Kate Smith, would you, would you put yourself in that group? I, I'm clearly in that group also. <laughs> Yes, it's interesting, isn't it, when people with no real argument to fall back on uh, resort to these, you know, very unfortunate uh, sexist stereotypes. I mean, the truth is that they're absolutely entitled to, to raise their voices and say that they want to do this and that they're enjoying it, etc., etc. But actually, you know, I, over the years I've been on these, you know, debate shows very much like yours, often with page three models. And, and I've met some of them, and they're quite right. They're not all stupid. They're not all, uh, you know, helpless, hopeless causes, as it were. In fact, there's some very smart and wonderful young women and I can't wait for our country uh, to be able to use their resources as you know nurses and politicians and campaigners and business leaders there's some very smart women out there and I think it's great news that they're going to now be presented with the opportunity to go and do something else with their lives and uh, and good luck to them I wish them the very best but to, to flip back to the point about free speech this isn't um, this, this isn't, in a way, um, the same issue as what we have with Charlie Hebdo. What we're looking at with Charlie Hebdo is people who were angry at what was being chosen by editors and what was being published in a newspaper, who reacted in the wrong way with violence and, you know, and, and in a way that was completely inappropriate. This is a case of people reacting just the right way by seeing what other people had expressed, what had, what had been published, and raising their own voices. And, you know, what happens when everybody raises their voice is that, you know, somewhere in the middle an editorial decision is made, you know, just as by the same token, if you knew that I was somebody who couldn't stop swearing every three seconds, you wouldn't have invited me on your show in the first place. An editorial decision is made. And, um, okay. you know, I think, it, I think this is a, a victory for free speech because people have felt able to come out and say what they think and their voices have been listened to, which is brilliant. Okay, there we will leave it. Kate Smurthwaite and Steve Hewlett, thank you both very much. The Sun is reported to be dropping its regular page three pictures of topless models. The paper hasn't yet confirmed the move. The Sun's sister paper, The Times, says the change has been approved by the parent company's chairman, Rupert Murdoch, who last year described the images as old-fashioned. The photographs will continue to appear on The Sun's website. Our correspondent, Sangeeta Meiske, reports. For 44 years, The Sun argued that page three was just a bit of fun. A snapshot of Britain's uniquely saucy sense of humour, captured in a self-proclaimed family newspaper. But could the joke have finally worn thin? The Times, the Sun's sister paper, has reported that with the blessing of its owner, Rupert Murdoch, page three has been dropped. When this started, it was all about an offer to a key constituency, if you like, the working bloke, to say, we'll give you what you want. Don't let the BBC or Guardian or the politicians or the feminists tell you you can't have it. We're there for you. Well, the world has now moved on. 50% of the Sun's readers are women. For as long as there's been page three, there have been protests against it. The Sun's stance has shifted here too. Former MP Claire Short was a vociferous campaigner as a result, she was, says a former Sun editor, subjected to cruel personal attacks. More recent campaigns have been better received by the paper's owner, Rupert Murdoch. Even so, those protesters still feel the battle isn't over. I can't stand here and say it's an amazing day for women and female representation in the media when essentially all the Sun have done is they've stopped showing nipples but they're now going to show women in bikinis or underwear, say. You know, essentially the Sun is still saying that women are there primarily to decorate the news while the men, you know, exist in the news in clothes, doing things. Nevertheless, page three still has its defenders, chief among them those who have featured in it. Rather than a victory for feminism, they say it's a lost opportunity for empowerment. It's a huge industry that's orientated by females. You have females in front of the camera, females behind the camera. You have women doing the hair and the makeup. So this is going to hit hard on women. The Sun is today refusing to confirm or deny whether it really has biffed page three. Media experts say that's because if sales begin to fall, it wants to be able to reintroduce page three as soon as possible. If you're a Sun reader missing your topless fix, then today's newspaper carries a web link to its glamour model online. Sangeeta Meisker, BBC News. Well, with us now is a former Page 3 model, Susie Jewell. Thanks for coming in to You're talk welcome. to us. Well, the boss thinks it's old-fashioned. Is Rupert Murdoch right? <laughs> I think it, it has had its day, but there are still people that want to see it. 
but um, it's, it's not the same as it was back in the day. So when, when were you a page three model? Between 1975 and 1978. And when you say it's not the same, in what way has it changed since then? I think it was a lot more innocent and I think it's probably a little bit more provocative now, but there are still the, the type of people that do want to see it and, um, and that do buy the sun and want, want, to, want page three to remain. You'll be aware, though, that a lot of people say it's sexist and demeaning of women as well. Yes, yes. It, I, I, of course there are. I mean, I think it's sometimes it's a little bit inappropriate if you know, somebody's sitting on a bus reading it uh, and, you know, on, open on that page. But generally, I, I think it's fairly harmless. Do you think, though, that some young girls particularly could be disempowered by it? Because we have heard arguments today um, from, from models that actually it's empowering for women, but whether you could actually be disempowered by looking at these images and, um, and feeling bad about yourself. Well, there's nothing that you're not going to see in Vogue or Marie Claire or, you know, fashion magazines. P people could say the same about, about that, you know. Who, who wouldn't love to be on the cover of Vogue, but you, you look at it and you, you sort of you think, oh, God, I don't look like that, because the pictures, as on page three, are airbrushed and nobody looks exactly as it seems. So you could say that about newspaper pictures or fashion magazine pictures. I suppose the difference with The Sun is it it's, it's purports to be a family newspaper. It yes. advertises children's toys on the front yes. sometimes. Yes. And is this really the way we want to represent women? I, I think when you say it's a family newspaper, that's, that's why I think it's, it's different now because it was a lot more innocent and it was sort of like a, a picture on a beach. But maybe now it's a little bit too, sort of too provocative and not quite as innocent as it was. And just a final question, what impact, if any, will this have on models who are working in the glamour industry? Um, I think... I think if as a model you want to continue, you, you want to get in it to go into the glamour industry rather than the fashion industry, it, it, it's, a, it's quite a good sort of stepping stone and exposure. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> Susie Jewell, thanks for coming in to talk okay, to us. We welcome. appreciate it. Thanks. thanks.